The next speaker is Andrew. Okay, thank you. So the purpose of my talk is to give a general description of the area of mathematics that I work in, not for ex for non-experts. Okay. So I want to introduce the objects, constructions, some open problems, and possibly some applications. I have to be imprecise at certain points. It's an invitation for conversation. So I think most of you probably has an intuitive understanding of what are the singularities of the spaces, but what I mean by singularities of constructible sheaves. So let me explain what are constructible sheaves first. So I'm going to, yeah, a word in the front. So if you have not heard of the word sheet before, then just think of it as a family of vector spaces from some space. And if you have heard of the word coherent sheaves, but not constructible sheaves, then I have to warn you that constructible sheaves are a very different kind of object. If coherent sheaves, you think about sections of vector bundles down here, it's sections of coverings, more discrete. So I'm going to work in the following context. Complex sheets. Um, complex analytic spaces. Complex analytic manifolds. <laughs> Constructible with respect to the complex analytic topology. So I'm going to explain what constructible means. And B, and our sheaves on smooth <laughs> algebraic variety over some algebraically closed field of characteristic P greater than zero and L and P are confined. And if you know what I mean, and if you like the third context pattern, you can also think of D modules. Okay, but I'm going to focus on A and B. Um, and L, L is the finite field with L elements. Okay. So the stocks of the sheaves are at L vector space. Here they are C vector spaces. So what are constructible sheets? So you probably know what are constant sheets. And now more complicated than constant sheets are locally constant sheets. So these are sheets which are locally constant. And there is a remarkable description of locally constant sheets with finite dimensional stocks. So it turns out that this category is equivalent to the category of finite dimensional representations of the fundamental group of your space. Um, but, so if the fundamental group is complicated, then this is a really complicated uh, category, okay? and which is almost always the case when it's characteristic P. The fundamental group is very complicated. So the upper line is very complicated already. So, uh, yes. Now, definition. Okay. Constructible sheet on X is a sheet F on X such that there exists some stratification of your X into subspaces. So there are some uh, conditions on these stratifications, but I'm not going to specify. Just think of it as a partition, a nice partition such that when you restrict the sheep to each stratum, it's local system. Local systems. Which, uh, yeah, lo by local system, I just mean the left-hand side, these objects.
a constructive sheet is just a artificial neural space, and on each stratum, you have a local system and then glue them together. So why do we just study this class of sheets? Because A, they are large enough to uh, include interesting things you need in applications, and two, they are stable on the sheet theoretical operations. Stable under? Sheet theoretical operations. That if you have a map between spaces, you can push forward in different ways and can pull back and tensor product, you can take forms. Yeah, these operations. <laughs> no, I. Similarities of constructible sheaves. I mean, deviations of these from being a local system. This is not a precise statement. Now, uh, more precisely, given the sheep, the constructible sheep F, one can associate to it a subset of the potential model. So this is a closed subset. And it's called the singular support. The SS stands for singular support. So it's the support of the singularities. Encoding this deviation, including the deviation. So, it's a subset of the cotangent bundle. So, each point in it is information of a position in X, the point in X, and the covector at X. So, but deviation, more precisely, it's position and also direction. Let me immediately give you some examples. <laughs> I'm not going to define it. Your space is A1. You have the origin. And let's consider the sheaf to be you take the constant sheaf on A1 minus the origin. So lambda is the coefficient that I want you to think about. So if you are in context A, it's C, in context B, it's FL. It's a constant sheaf on the complement of the origin. And then there's an operation called a sheaf extension. Sheaf extent, you get a sheaf on A1. The stocks of the sheet, I mean, you can give you so that and get feeling for this sheet. At the origin, it's zero. And outside, it's just lambda. Okay, so what is its singular spot? Um, so, uh, like a reasonable for you, it's, it's the zero section. So, this is zero section in the cotangent form, just A1, union. The whole cotangent space at the origin. One example. The second example is if you look at A2. And you look at the y axis, the, a, uh, the x axis. This I'm going to plot z1, this I'm going to plot z2. And the sheet will be the constant sheet on z1 union or direct sum, the constant sheet on Z2 direct sum constant sheet that's the origin. What is this singular spot? Okay, so I'm going to draw it. Um, away from the origin, it's going to be these co normal directions. So if your coordinates is x and y, then these directions are dy. At the origin, it's going to be the whole contingent space. Okay, the last example. And this example is just in the context of B. Okay, and it's for people who know what, what it means. Okay. So look at NA2. 
look at the complement of the y axis I call you. Um, fix some non trivial homomorphism from the MOP to FL star. If consider the following equation, it determines the Galois covering over U and with Galois group Z MOP. So in particular, that gives you a suggestion from I1 of U to Z MOP and composed with this character, you get a representation of the fundamental group with U. So by that correspondence that corresponds to some local system on U, then my sheet is the trick extension of this local system, A2. Okay, so as you might expect, the singular support uh, is going to be the zero section outside, but it's going to have some interesting behavior along the y axis. And it turns out to be like this. So these are generated by the whole of the dy at every point of the y axis. And so there are some remarkable things one can say in general about this singular spot. Uh, I'm going to write I think the dimension of this singular spot is equal to the dimension of x, assuming x is equidimensional and f is not zero. Um, and then if you are in characteristic zero, then the singular spot of f is always the uh, ground in the potential form. Um, okay, so let me pause and make a historical remark. So the notion of singular support, um, and what I'm going to say later, character cycles, uh, these notions were first introduced in the theory of D-modules. Okay, so it's called Kashiwara and Sato, okay, and then, um, um, so it's, Sato has this point of view that you should view objects that living in cotangent bundles instead of just the space. Okay, and then Kashura and Shapira developed a parallel story in the world of GPs or manifolds. Okay. And then in the 70s and 80s, it was observed that there is a strong analogy between the theory of D modules and analytic sheets. So it was a natural question if you can do similar things in analytic context. Um, and it was conjectured by Deline that there exists singular sporting category cycles in the analytic context. And then it's only in 2015 and uh, around 2015 to 17 that Bailey's and Saito were able to uh, successfully define this notion in, in the analytic context. Okay. So part of my work is to try to understand further this analogy and also trying to extend this uh, micro-local point of view in analytic. So yes, so I mentioned this just now, but uh, let me just write it down. So there is a further refinement of the notion of singular support to a character cycle. So this is a cycle in the continuum. So you can add integer coefficients to the components of the singular support character cycle. It includes further information. Right. So there are many things one can ask about this this point, so, but I'm not going to tell you one open problem. It, it's one that has recent problems in the mathematics community. So consider the following situation. You have a map, a proper map, in complex speed. And given a shift on X, then, as I said, you can associate it to into it some cycle. Now, the natural thing one can do is you can push forward this cycle to live in the potential bundle of Y. But you can also first push forward the shift and then uh, compute it inside. So the question is, 
the given a sheet, you do the cycle construction. Or if you follow the sheet and I do the cycle construction, does this diagram commute? Okay, so let me just write that uh, cycle proof this under some assumptions. One minute. Okay. Assumptions and dimension of this map with respect to this sheet. And how we prove this mm -hmm. up to inverting T in the problem. Okay, so, but in the most general case, you're open. Uh, let me just to finish, just mention some applications of what I've said. So, one application is in the whole theory of geometric alignments where you have to use the notion of single spot to, pre to uh, restrict the class of sheets you consider. And they're usually of representation theoretic interest. And um, uh, the other applications in what is called the quantitative sheet theory, developed by Will Salmon and his collaborators. And uh, that has some applications to equidistribution and the exponential sums. But um, let me stop here. What the uh, side do It's this. You compute the push forward of the single spot. It's less than you told you the dimension of it. If I fix the propinus, this is not satisfied. But it is satisfied for the point. So on points, we know this. And also in country zero, it's always satisfied. Okay, thank you very much.